In today's video, I decided I wanted to do a mini tutorial in how I made this risograph slash halftone effect in Photoshop. Risograph is a layered style of printing whose process is similar to screen printing. It creates beautiful vivid colours and through its printing technique, it also creates this dotted effect known as halftone. I wanted to try this effect digitally for my illustration to really make it pop. This is the before and after. Here we are inside Photoshop and I have my art piece open. I really like how it looks at this stage of the process, but there are these sections of flat colour I don't want to add shading to, yet there's something I want to add to it to make it a bit more interesting. So this is my original scene with all my separate colour layers, as I've added a few extra masks on top for textured brushes, if you see here. What I like about this effect is it works well with my illustration workflow. Let me know if you want a deeper dive into it. I tend to work with a main colour layer and a lines layer and this effect works without me having to have every component separated out into individual layers, unlike a lot of the tutorials I previously watched. I do want to add a mini disclaimer that this effect doesn't look too good on photography because of the amount of colour values that are in an image, so the effect gets completely lost. I find I've gotten good results for my illustration as it's not super complex in both colour palette and details. I just need to make a couple of tweaks to this original art to make it ready for the effect. So all my colour layers under this group are going to be flattened into one colour layer. Rather than working on the layers directly, I love making copies of things in case I need to go back and change things later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Ctrl Shift Alt E or Shift Command Option E on a Mac which will duplicate and flatten the layer simultaneously. So there's all my layers combined into one, which includes both my lines and my colours. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the original art and just focus on this layer. So I'm going to duplicate that by pressing Ctrl J. I'm then going to go to Filter, Filter Gallery, and go into sketch and click halftone pattern. So I'm going to zoom out. And the thing about the halftone pattern and the settings is that it really depends on the size of your artwork. So my artwork is bigger than about 6,000 by 6,000 pixels. So it's going to need different settings depending on if you've got like a 1,000 by 1,000 pixel canvas. So it's mostly about tweaking and just kind of seeing the kind of look you want and you like. So in my case my size is 9 and I've decided to go for a contrast of about 19. So if I move this about I can kind of see how much detail it's adding and taking away and at 19 it's kind of just where I want it. So that's all good. The one issue about the halftone pattern is that it's very uniform so I want to add a bit of irregularity to it just to make it look more natural and a bit like the actual printing process. So I can add a new layer, which means I can add it on to the existing pattern and then I can go to distort and glass. Again, it's about sort of how you want it to look. So I'm gonna sort of tweak it just to get it right. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. So I'm going to press OK. So now that I have this halftone effect layer, I actually want to go and make it black and white. So what I'm going to do is go image, adjustments, black and white, and then this is going to pop up. So I'm going to bring these values down. So the darkest value is pretty much black. I am tweaking it a bit because I don't want to lose some of the texture that's going on here so I'm not toggling it all the way because as you see it's just a complete silhouette which is not what I want. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. So this next step was definitely an experiment for me. I realized with the black and white like this it actually didn't give the effect I wanted. So what I'm gonna do is invert the colors and that way 
I got a more natural sort of grainy halftone effect. So either press Ctrl I or go Image Adjustments Invert and that's going to invert the colours. Then after that you go to the drop down for the filters and you go soft light and I've brought mine down to about 47%. I don't like that it's not a rounded number but it actually it's, it's the best setting I found for me. You see you've got the slight half tone just coming out of the image really nicely. Next I want to add this very slight colour shift as if it was actually being printed and each colour layer isn't been properly aligned. So to do that I'm going to use the handy flatten and duplicate, so Control shift alt e Bring that here. Yep, that's done it correctly. And then I'm going to go Effects, Blending Options and remove every channel except red. So if you see, if I hide these two, it's just the red. So what I do is, just on my keyboard, I use the arrow keys to offset that layer ever so slightly. So you'll see it's just giving a slight kind of offset, sort of chromatic effect. So I just kind of move it around a bit to get it in the place when I want. Like I don't want it too much because I don't want it too obvious. If you see it around the eyes it's a bit jarring, like it's almost meant to be 3D but it's not. I, I'm not a fan so just maybe like a few pixels with my keyboard. Like it's very very subtle. You can see around the moon here and the hair and the shapes. Like this is good for me. After that I want to add even more texture to it, so I'm going to add a little bit of film grain. So again, Control shift alt e and with that I'm going to go Filter Gallery, Filter Gallery, nope not that one, because that applies what I just applied earlier, so this Filter Gallery, my bad. And then remove this layer, I don't need it anymore, I just need a single layer go to artistic and film grain and in this case I really like the effect of film grain because I have a bit of textured brushes here and it kind of adds a, a very sort of vintage printed look around the head and it's really cool tweak that I think I'm happy about here. Like, I don't want it too intense, just a little bit, um, and that's great. So it has brightened it up a bit, which I like, and it's really sort of intensified the half tones on her, and I think that looks really cool. The next thing I'm doing is quite specific to my illustration. Um, so this step could probably just be ignored, but basically as I've added all these steps I've noticed that a lot of my line work has kind of faded out and become a lot less prominent and that's one part I'm not a fan of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my original art and I'm going to just flatten and duplicate my lines. These are my lines. Now let's hide the background. So just flatten and duplicate these with the usual Shift Control Alt E and bring them all the way up here. If I hide everything again and unhide all these. You can see that my lines are now a lot more prominent. They're a lot more intense, which I like. Um, the only issue is the effect has affected some of my outlines here. Um, so I'm going to do this minor cosmetic change which is go with a little eraser and just do the tedious job of erasing all the outlines and only keeping my inner lines. So yeah, this might not apply to you, probably doesn't apply to you but this is what I'm doing.
it is very rough. I'm not too worried about getting every bit of the outline, but just enough so that it's not super obvious. I'm also using my mouse as well, so it's actually not going to be neat at all. And there you have it. You can see that if I hide it and bring it back, my main line art is a lot more emphasised, which is so much better than how it was with the effects. Now the last step is just for that tiny bit of icing on this risograph cake. So I'm going to add some additional textures and I find these textures on Unsplash for free. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for cardboard texture and find one that kind of matches a sort of textured paper look that I want to achieve. I'm just going to go with this watercolour style, so I'm going to download it and then I'm going to apply it to my canvas. I'm going to resize it so it covers everything and I'm just going to pick the right effect for me. I would love to know the amount of times I have said the word texture in this video, but yeah, I think that's as far as my vocabulary goes. But um, I'm happy with Multiply, it looks pretty good. Move it about to kind of bring it out a bit. I mean, if you do happen to be printing anyway, you can kind of skip this step, but I like it if I'm posting it online and I want to show how I might want to display it on paper. But yeah, there you have it. This is a mini tutorial. I also ended up applying this effect to one of my other similar art pieces too. I'd love to see if you do the same, or if you use similar steps and manage to adapt this method to your own work. I hope it helped you in some way. Um, thanks for watching.